Protected. Protected. The white. It's beautiful. Oh, and I promise, no lame puns about masks or masking. I, I, I wouldn't do that to you. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about masking. Liquid frisket, masking fluid, goes by a bunch of different names. Lots of different brands out there. I have a few in my studio that I've tried and a couple that I prefer. We're gonna talk about why that's important, why we need to protect the white highlights of your paper, and the best ways to apply it, and some tips in applying it and removing it. So let's get started. Everybody give Reese, my studio partner, a big hand. Reese, buddy, way to get into the spirit of the episode. Wait a minute, what's this? I told you, buddy, this is not facial mask. Okay, so when we talk about liquid frisket or masking, we're doing it with one main goal in mind, and that's protecting the white of the paper. Traditionally, that's where watercolorists get their white. They don't use a white paint. Now, there are artists that do and use either acrylic or an opaque gouache. Um, however, you usually can tell that they've done that and it has a little bit different look. The purest form of using white in watercolor is the white of the paper. So it has to be protected. Now, there are a couple ways to do that. The easiest way is just to paint around the object that you want white. And that's fine if it's big, doesn't have a lot of filigree details. The more detailed and intricate it gets like this, the more difficult that is. Because inevitably in watercolor, you want a nice contiguous wash that has a lot of transition. And you can just go whoosh, right through that. If you have to paint around each one of those little details, you won't have that continuity. A good workflow usually is when you done your drawings or you've planned out your sketches how however it is you plan your initial paintings you locate where the highlights are going to be the the hottest whitest highlights that doesn't mean they stay white you may go back in later and paint but if you don't protect that white you have no way of bringing the white back as i do more demos down the road you'll see how i do it i'll send you some to some sites where you can see how some other artists do it we got lots of that stuff coming folks so Bear with me, we're going to get more into the demos, but I just felt like we needed an episode where we deal more with the in-depth use of masking fluid because I don't see a lot out there on the subject, at least not in detail. It goes by several names, masking fluid, frisket, this one's called misket, um, this one is an orange color, uh, this one which is very popular with a lot of artists is uh, called Peebo Drawing Gum. So that's a different sort of a name, but it's very definitely masking fluid. This is a product that I found. It's, it's kind of new to me. I've never, I hadn't tried it until recently. It's a mask pen. It just has a, a fine line pen in it, but it's the same stuff inside. It's a masking fluid. You can get it in all different colors. Uh, usually you like a color because it stands out from the white of the paper. And as you're painting, you can see where it is. Masking fluid is nothing more than a latex rubber. When you paint it on, it, it dries and forms into a rubbery film that you can peel off, sort of like rubber cement. There are a number of ways to apply masking fluid. The most common one is a brush. Masking fluid flows off a brush really well. You can cover a lot of area with mask if you're, if you're masking a big area. It's easy to, to dip and replenish. It usually gives you a longer stroke than any other way I'm going to show you. If you use a brush, find a brush that you can designate for a masking brush. And I've tagged mine as you can see here. The other thing you need to do, because eventually you'll get little uh, latex rubber build up in your bristles, is have a little kind of a sample bar of soap or a shard off of a bar of soap. And just once you get your, your brush wet, just roll it around a little bit, get it soapy, then dip it into your frisket and paint. Another method I've found that works fairly well is uh, this bamboo stick. You know, these are used in like sumi ink drawings or paintings and Chinese calligraphy, that kind of thing. The advantage to it is that it gets fairly 
tiny details and it's easy to clean. You don't have to put soap on it. Um, you don't even really have to rinse it off. Um, you just, you know, peel it off with your fingers. The disadvantage is you have to keep dipping it more often. And sometimes it's a little slow to start. You have to tap it on your paper to get it started. But I've done, you know, this for detailed areas and it works okay. Okay, so here's another one which I like really well. I've only started using this recently. It's it's called a color shaper, but it's also sold as a masking brush. It's got a little kind of rubbery tip, so it's not doesn't have hairs like a regular brush, but it works really well. You don't have to soap it. Uh, I can get fairly good detail. This is not as tiny a detail but if we're covering bigger areas it's okay I have to dip it more often though than I do a standard brush so it, it, you know, it has that disadvantage now here's two options I just want to show you for really fine detailed work now, I don't know if you know what a ruling pen is but what you did was you dipped your brush in ink and then you filled that slot in between with ink and these could be used on compasses you can use them with paint by the way but these also work for masking fluid. Now I don't get bother with getting a brush and filling that gap in. I just get something like in a little container like this and I just dip it. The advantage to this is um, you can rule or draw and you get a very uniform line. You want something very precise. You're doing a technical subject and you want to rule some masking lines. That's, a, that's the way to go. That's about the only way to go. This other one that is a dip pen. It's meant to be dipped in India ink and drawn with, or colored inks and drawn with. This works with masking fluid. I like this big one with the big kind of little space there. It, when I press, I get a lot of spread on the nib. And again, like with the bamboo stick, you may have to tap it and get it started. But you can get tiny little hair-like detail with this. All right, well, last but not least is removing the masking fluid. You can roll it off with your finger but inevitably you end up having to get something like this. This is a rubber cement pickup. Very reliable way to do it. And you just use it like an eraser. And it just pulls it right up. When you put masking fluid down, don't let it stay there for long. Don't put it down until you're ready to pull it up within uh, 24 hours to a couple days. If it stays on the paper for a very long uh, it makes it really hard to get up. Well, folks, that's about all the masking yumminess and goodness I have for you today. Get out there and try it. You know, you need to master this this part of the process because I tell you, there's nothing more exciting than determining where your highlights are, masking those off. That's a little bit of work up front, but once you put in the dark background washes, then later lift up the mask and you go, ooh, look at those highlights pop. Now I'm ready to get in there and do some work. So... Practice these techniques. Learn how to use them. Very important. Go out and mask something. Mask it all. Mask the whole world. No, don't do that. If you've got some tips and techniques that you like to do, you like to use, you think would be helpful, share those with us down in the comments. If you have any questions about how masking works or, or things you've had trouble with, also leave that down in there. We'll see if we can help solve that for you. This has been a help for you. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you like the video. Guys, we got lots more coming and I'm really excited. We got painting demos coming and I'm starting to get some great comments from you guys and suggestions for future episodes. That's what I want. So keep them coming. Till then, we'll see you next time.